Happy Tuesday, Shannon Wilkie with the Shine Advocacy Group. For this month, we're gonna just touch base on the most common disabilities that we work with with our students and just shed some light for the parents who are having a new diagnosis or for any educators who are watching this. So our lens is obviously education, so we'll be looking through the education model, but we're gonna start with ADHD. So first of all, there is a lot of reference to ADD still because it used to be um, the name for ADHD that was inattentive type. But from, from the diagnostic codes change, so from now on, um, for now at least, until they change again, it is ADHD inattentive type, which means um, lack of focus um, and difficulty you know, holding attention and focus, and ADHD combined type, which is focus and hyperactivity, and then the ADHD hyperactive type, which is the impulse hyperactive. So that's kind of the baseline to start out. Your, your student will either have the diagnosis of ADHD, which stands for attention deficit hyperactive disorder, um, and it will either be inattentive type, combined type, or hyperactive type. So let's talk, one of the biggest questions I get is what causes ADHD? The answer from all that I've studied, which has been for decades, I, I'm not a doctor or a medical professional, but I've worked with students with ADHD for many, many years, and the exact cause is unknown, but we do see correlation with genetics, environment, um, possible just the brain development. So most are starting to refer to it as a neurological condition or a learning difference. Um, I know for, for my family members that have ADHD, we like to call it a learning difference versus a disability or disorder. Um, so at the end of the day, those are all just labels. And, at, and one thing that we also see sometimes when kids are young and they have the hyperactive type of ADHD, these may be the students who are in the principal's office or they may even have the dreaded label that I do not like at all, ODD, which stands for Oppositional Defiant Dif Disorder. Now, if you have a student who struggles behaviorally, having that extra label of ODD, um, what I like to tell parents is it is a clue for us to know how to help them. And that's simply it. It is not a label that needs to stick with them for life. It is not a sentence that they are never going to be able to behave. It means that they are inflexible by nature of their disability and that they may have more hyperactivity and impulsivity and more growth in that area. Just like there's a big gamut of students with reading disabilities, there's a big gamut of students with ADHD. So if behavior is one of the things that your ADHD student struggles with greatly, know that social, emotional, and behavioral can all be tackled at school as well, from kindergarten through college. It does not have to be just young kids or just older kids. Kids can learn social skills. They can learn classroom management skills. They can learn communication skills. They can learn attention and focus. This can all be done inside and outside of school. So with, with that being said, um, if you do not have an ADHD diagnosis, um, you know, and for those of you who are very familiar with it, sorry, I'm going to go back a little bit. Just some of the symptoms, we'll call them, would be lack of focus, poor time management, that's executive function, where the prefrontal cortex of our brains isn't fully developed, and sometimes getting tasks done is difficult, organization is difficult, um, impulsivity, especially with that hyperactive type, you know, sometimes emotional regulation, having like fits, um, forgetfulness, you know, motivations difficult. Sometimes these students are very hyper focused on something. They want to write a book and they'll spend all day doing it and everything else will go to the wayside and then they can't do some of the mundane tasks because they have that, you know, some of the gifts of ADHD is they have that ability to hyper focus. Um, fatigue, sometimes, you know, not having a strong self esteem can be kind of a byproduct of this diagnosis because they're the kids they are constantly being, being corrected. Johnny do this, Johnny do that. So sometimes they need a little extra TLC and a little extra self-esteem help. So, so those are some of the symptoms. If you 
have a student that you would like to um, find out if they have the actual diagnosis, you can start with your pediatrician. If they're younger, you can start with the developmental pediatrician. Um, you can also ask the school because it's a learning disability. It falls under other health impairment and it, it can be something that's assessed at school for social emotional behavioral um, and academics can also be affected greatly. So reach out if you have questions on how to look for ADHD at school. The whole month of August, we're going to be talking about the different evaluations. So the first step is getting the diagnosis if your student has it. And the second step is let's get them help. And it doesn't have to be just academic. That's my favorite message about ADHD. A lot of growth can happen, social, emotional, and behaviorally. All right, take care.